Within this part, we will discuss a bit about FreeRTS configuration. Most of the configuration parameters are set within FreeRTS config.h file. It is a source file, which is one of the key components of the operating system, and those components are completely independent on the platform. The most important parameters you can see right now on the screen so the first one is config use preemption, which is defining whether our operating system will work in a preemption mode or cooperative mode. We are describing the difference between those two in next parts of this uh, training. The second component is about the clock of the CPU given in Hertz. It is automatically set uh, by STM32CubeMix, what you will see a bit uh, later on. Then we've got a tick rate in Hertz, so how often our context would be switched. It is uh, in fact configuring one of the timers, in our case it will be SysTick, to generate an interrupt, which would uh, trigger the context switch, so the switch between the tasks of the operating system. The next parameter, very important one, is number of the priorities we will use within our application. Then total heap size is defining how much memory we will have within the RAM to store the information about our operating system components, each variables, so the tasks, semaphores, queues, mutexes, software timers, all of those components require some space within the RAM memory to store the uh, temporary variables to store its configuration, its parameters. All of those must be allocated somehow on the RAM memory and it is done within this heap size dedicated to operating system. What is important is that this total heap size is given in bytes once the other components like uh, the stack size of the tasks is given in words. Please have a look on this. It is quite well visible within the stm 32 cubemix application, but if you would uh, edit this uh, freeRTS config.h file manually, please uh, be aware on those differences. The last two components are related to the interrupt priorities to configure the system in such a way that operating system will not negatively interact with the hardware, with the other parts of the embedded system. So the first component, config library lowest interrupt priority. It is in fact the lowest interrupt priority which is available in our system. In Cortex M for up, uh, cut, in Cortex M for uh, implementation done with an STM32 L4 devices, which we are using in this uh, training, uh, this lowest interrupt priority is uh, 15. This uh, level of the interrupts would be used by the interrupts which are responsible for the context switch. Then the next component, uh, config library max syscall interrupt priority, is the highest interrupt priority, highest number, which uh, would be used for the interrupts uh, which needs to execute any of the function from the operating system. So, if we set here, for example, 5, it means that all the interrupts which uh, needs to execute any of the operating system functions must have its uh, priority set uh, between 5 and 15. So, this uh, between this max syscall and uh, lowest interrupt priority. Interrupts uh, with the priority which, is, which has lower number, so in fact higher priority, so 4, 3, 2, 1 and 0 uh, would uh, be completely independent from the operating system uh, and would be not blocked by the operating system in any, any context switch location on a, any critical sections which are used within the free RTS. Let's have a look on other config parameters important within the free RTS system. I came back uh, to stm 32 cubemix as we can see all of the parameters uh, from our freertos config.h file here. Uh, so it's much easier to manipulate on this graphical interface. 
So we already discussed about the preemption. As you can see, the clock, uh, CPU clock in Hertz is given uh, by the by the tool itself. So it's automatically generated using the information from clock configuration from this application. Then the tick rate is given in Hertz. Uh, we can change it. Uh, right now it is one kilohertz. Uh, then maximum number of priorities is set uh, to 56 and it's constant. Then we've got a minimum stack size and uh, please have a look, uh, this uh, number is given in words and it's used uh, for the task creation. If you create a new task, uh, it will have by default this value, 128 words as um, stack size. Then we've got a maximum task name length given in signs, so uh, we've got uh, 16. Then we've got some components which would be used, can be used within the application. So as you can see, most of them are right, right now enabled. It has this drawback that uh, any enable additional functionality will increase the total size of uh, operating system of the code, uh, which we would generate later on. From the most important parameters, which what we would need to discuss now is a memory management setting. As you can see right now, we've got a memory allocation set of dynamic and static. Most of the operations we will do as a dynamic memory with the dynamic memory allocation. The next component is a total heap size. So this is the total memory which would be allocated in RAM uh, to store the variables, to store the local, uh, local data of each operating system component. And as you can see, this time it is given in bytes. So we allocated 3000 bytes for the heap size of the operating system. The next point uh, is a memory management scheme. Uh, by default, it is heap 4. We can select uh, heap 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. We've got a dedicated part within this session about those memory management schemes. Uh, then uh, we've got uh, so-called hook functions, which are used uh, during the development uh, phase, because those allows you to monitor the behavior of your application, which is using the free RTS. Below you can see the runtime statistics, uh, which are used as well uh, during the development phase. Uh, coroutines, uh, this is the mechanism so which is used within the free RTOS when you are using this system with uh, smaller microcontrollers, 8, uh, 16 bits. So as you can see, these uh, are disabled uh, for Cortex-M devices because uh, we are using uh, full-size uh, tasks, not uh, coroutines. Uh, below you will find uh, software timer definitions, which are by default enabled. And the interrupt uh, uh, priority levels we already described. So this is the first part concerning the config parameters. The second one related to this one is in the next tab. It's called include parameters. This tab uh, allows us to disable or enable the function which would be included uh, into our free RTOS implementation. So we can add some additional functionality to our system if needed, but we should remember about one important point. If we enable some of those functions, the total code size of our application will be much bigger. can be much bigger because all of those functions contain some uh, part of the code. Uh, from the most important uh, components, uh, the functions which are present here, I, I could uh, name, for example, task priority set, task priority get, which allows you to manipulate on the priorities of the tasks. Then task delete, which allows you to delete an unused task uh, if needed. Then uh, we've got task suspend, which is uh, uh, blocking the, inter the, the task for some time. And then task delay which is uh, switching as well the task from the running state to the delay state for a given time. Uh, so you can see much more of those functions. Most of them would be described in the further sections of this uh, training. So as you can see within the STM32Cube MX application, you can define all the configuration for the free RTS system. All what you will set here will be stored later on during the code generation within the freertos config.h file.
and you can manipulate on this file manually later on or you can use as well this configurator to make any modification and regenerate the code. Thank you for watching this video.